session of our 2022 Alaska Food Festival and Conference. Um, my name is Robbie Mixon. I'm the director of the Food Policy Council and I am joined by Amy Seitz who is our board president amongst many other things. <laughs> you keep trying to make me be president. I'm chair. A oh, chair. Don't, don't, don't make my head too big. <laughs> um, and we're here just to share a little bit of information about how you can get more involved in the Alaska Food Policy Council. These conferences are awesome, maybe a little exhausting and jam-packed, but um, we off Sunday to recoup, I hope, but um, we're always looking for ways to connect with each other um, in between the times um, of these big conferences. So. Um, Amy and I are going to share a little bit about what we do and how to get involved. And are you guys able to see the screen? All right, passing it to Miss Seitz. <laughs> all right, thank you, Robbie. And thank you, everyone, um, first of all, for participating in the conference and for so many people staying for the whole conference, even though it's a, a sunny Saturday yeah. afternoon. So yeah, thank you everyone. And we can go ahead and go to the next screen. So we're gonna quickly get through a little bit about who Alaska Food Policy Council is and how you can get in more involved. Um, AFPC are, oh, <laughs> you're really okay. making me, we're doing Long lightning. Day. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so our goal is to create a healthier, more secure and more self-reliant Alaska by improving our food system. And as, as we've heard, over and over, you know, multiple times in this this weekend, the last few days, the food system. There's lots of parts to the food system. It's it's not just one thing. Um, one thing that AFPC focuses on a lot is policy, and we can jump to the next one, the next slide. And and I know a lot of people get get kind of confused or not confused, but you know policy doesn't necessarily make sense to them around food systems and you know what what policy impacts the food system and there's there's a lot of policy that impacts the food system um, and it's any activity that addresses shapes or regulates the food system and as as we've heard you know, transportation the environment access to food there's lots of pieces to the food system so there's lots of policy possibilities to impact the food system. And we can jump to the next one. And this is one I know we're working on updating our strategic plan. Uh, and I think one of the one of our goals here in our previous strategic plan that I think is really important and uh, always striving, whether it's AFPC or, or other other networks that we're involved with. Um, and we talked about it in one of our sessions earlier. But goal number five, Alaskans are engaged in our food system. That to me is super important to building a resilient food system. We need Alaskans not just involved in producing food or harvesting food or getting food to the hungry. We need Alaskans engaging with our politicians so they know what, um, what rules we need in place to uh, actually build that resilient food system. And we can jump to the next one. So this is, well, we have a few new board members, but our, our board is made up of uh, 15 volunteer board members and one part-time executive director, which probably is awesome. And we definitely couldn't do as much as we do without her. But so these are, um, was it January we took this picture? Board members in, in uh, position in January. We do have a couple more board members that we just brought on. Um, but yeah, 100% volunteer. So all of, all of these board members are dedicated to improving Alaska's food system. And we 
a great board. And here's a fun, uh, this is one of the things AFPC works on is, is uh, getting information out there. Um, lots, of, lots of numbers we've heard, 95% of our food is imported, one in five Alaska kids face chronic hunger. So um, definitely ways to improve. And the role of AFPC, so kind of our main focus as we look to um, to approve things, we always try to connect, advocate, and inform. And those are the kind of three areas we focus on um, connecting people. Like with this conference, there were what, 280 people registered. And then obviously lots of advocacy and, and informing stakeholders, policymakers, everyone. Uh, we can go to the next one. I think that might be on to you right now, Robbie. Yeah. So I'm going to quickly tell you um, uh, or try to tell you all the things that food, the Food Policy Council does. And then Amy and I'll let you know some ways that um, you can get involved. Um, so one thing we do is uh, public events like the one we're at right now. Um, we also do a lot of free webinars. We've uh, collaborated with the Farm Bureau and the Farmers Market Association and Alaska DEC to do some cottage food webinar series and a listening session. We've um, done film screenings and recently we had um, a couple of quarterly uh, food system discussions on transportation in the uh, within the food system in Alaska. So all of this information is on our website and our newsletter. So. Those are a couple ways um, to get involved. Um, we also do um, commission research and promote other research uh, around the state in the food system. Here's just a, a few examples. So a lot of this research can be used to build um, projects, programs, um, get funding, uh, find collaborators. So we try and um, make this uh, kind of a central hub for food system research around the state. Uh, we also do a newsletter. Um, we work with uh, Nick over at uh, Yardacopia um, to do a uh, bi-monthly uh, list of all the different food systems happenings around the state and that is posted on our website. So if you have something you would you want Nick to share, his email is there. We do a quarterly newsletter and we also have lots of blogs and action alerts. So if there's something uh, you know we need we need help on um, helping our legislators uh, on a certain policy we and we need to show support we will issue action alerts around that um, speaking of we do a lot of advocacy every year we um, join uh, the Alaska Food Coalition and a number of other organizations like the Farm Bureau um, in a legislative fly-in um, and we also uh, do policy uh, recommendations and look um, what what has worked in other states. What can we Alaskanize? What oh this worked in one community? How can we um, replicate it? Those are some things that we do too. So now we'll move into our committees, events, and volunteer projects that you might want to get involved in. And since Amy's the chair, co-chair of the advocacy committee, I'll let you do this one. <laughs> All right. Well, yep. Yeah, this is Kara Durr and I co-chair the advocacy committee. Um, I must like advocate. I must like policy stuff. Uh, but yeah, this this committee we do a lot of obviously planning around what message AFPC wants to give on policy recommendations. You know, right now we're starting to look at the Farm Bill 2023. We're also paying attention to what's happening in Juneau, uh, whether or not AFPC takes positions on legislation or, you know, pushing budget issues. Um, and then also just working on a lot of the education in, uh, during the legislative session. We, we've been doing some lunch and learns for uh, legislators and staff just to educate them about different aspects of the food system. So, um, we deal both with policy recommendations as well as uh, education. So we can move to the next one. The Indigenous Foods Working Group. 
Oh, were you getting, getting ready? Go ahead. To... You, I'll do the next one. <laughs> Go ahead. Which obviously this is another uh, very important uh, working group that we have uh, fairly new to our lineup of committees. Um, would encourage anyone interested in indigenous foods to get involved in this committee. Um, one of the, you know, getting the different committees to work back and forth. One thing the the indigenous foods working group has also brought some thoughts to the advocacy committee to look at for AFBC to take positions on um, or looking at areas of you know where where can where can the system improve around indigenous foods. We also have a communications committee that are in charge of our website and putting together blogs. Um, like Amy mentioned, we we do work across committees, so when advocacy came up with this great list of infrastructure recommendations, we turned it into different uh, visuals to help people understand and learn more about what we were um, recommending. We um, create an annual report um, and we're, we're pretty involved in the uh, promoting of conference and different events and can always uh, use help, um, help there. Um, there's also um, the Stickleback Farm. It's a collaborative partnership between many organizations, including Alaska Seeds of Change, the Anchorage Muni, and Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium. So this is a project, an urban farm based in Anchorage. And this past, uh, past fall, we put in um, just under 40 fruit cheat fruit trees and some uh, fish totes. And we're looking at um, how fruit trees uh, grow in, in cold weather. So there's lots of, um, lots of ways to get involved. There's actually a pruning workshop coming up in April. If you look on our website under upcoming events, it'll have all the information there. Now you can do this one <laughs> We also um, have been involved in a grant project with the USDA. It's a regional food system partnership grant, and it involved a lot of um, work with uh, community-based organizations around asset mapping um, and learning from each other, figuring out um, where we wanted to go as a community and a state. And so we have just um, launched our Alaska Food System Network um, questionnaire where you can go in and create a profile and connect with other folks from around the state. So um, we'll drop all the links in here in just a little bit, but um, I, if you go here, you can learn more about the project and sign up um, for your profile. All right, this is the slide I thought was gonna show up next, but. <laughs> the, the food waste working group um, has been going for, for a few years anyway, and, and actually our first year doing lunch and learns in Juneau, one of the lunch and learns was around uh, reducing food waste, and that came out of this, this committee um, putting together that lunch and learn and, and having that idea. Another great, um, or very important discussion in the food system is how do we reduce the amount of food that gets wasted. Um, so anyone, and we're particularly looking for someone to be the chair of this committee. So someone can raise their hand today and we'll write you down as chair. <laughs> and then of course we have our um, food festival and conference planning committee. It takes um, over a year to put this together. And it takes many, many hands and brains and ideas, all the things um, to put this together. So if you um, want to join up, we will. We would love to have you. We're probably going to take about four or five months off um, to regroup and pull ourselves back together. But um, we would we would love to have some new energy on that committee. Um, so this is just kind of a summary of how um, how you can get involved. So you can go sign up for our newsletter, um, which is on our website. You can join one or five committees if you'd like. And like Amy mentioned, if you want to chair the Food Waste Committee, um, that position is open. 
um, check out all of our materials on the website, um, submit stuff for us to post, attend events. Um, we also have a fundraising um, committee if you're interested in that. And then we're always open to collaborating and partnering on different um, working groups um, or different uh, projects as well. Um, so Amy, go ahead. I was just gonna I was just gonna say thank you for for joining us for this sixth conference that Alaska Food Policy Council has put on and thank you for thank you to our partners and sponsors because uh, this certainly wouldn't happen without you and the attendees. And if you have questions, you can get in touch with me here. Um, and, if, and Amy can drop her email down in the uh, chat if she wants. Um, but that's that's kind of our our closing up. I was um, wanted to also open up um, the floor to see if anyone had any questions, and then um, also wanted to point out. Hang on, I'm going to drop this link again. If you are interested in joining a working group, we, we added a nifty little form to our website so you can read all about them and then indicate your interest and we'll get, get you folks connected with the committees that you're interested in learning more about. Oh, we have a question. There were some sessions that I missed that I would really like to see. Is there still an opportunity to see those sessions? They're all gone. Just kidding. Oh <laughs> um, we will have them um, hopefully within the month, maybe sooner, um, uh, posted to our website and also in Whova. Um, and just so you guys know, Whova will be open for the next six months. So if there's contacts you wanted to get in touch with or some of the community boards or anything like that, you will um, be able to still access that for um, six months. But great question. Thank you. And yes, Melissa, great shout out um, on our bonfire store. We have uh, some Alaska food policy swag and conference uh, branded swag as well. So you can order it um, directly there. And then we do have a silent auction going on. It will close next Friday. So still plenty of time to bid. Have you seen that amazing quilt by Mel Sykes? Um, plus all the other awesome, um, really yummy looking um, prizes on there. I could could use a pint of wild scoops right about now. And, and if there's nothing else. I got one more thing. Perfect. So if everyone, um, we would love it if you would take our survey. Um, which I will drop in the link here or drop in the chat here in just a second. Um, and if you don't have time to do it now, you will get an email reminder. So this really just helps us plan our fall 2023 event. So every 18 months we have this event. Um, so if you could provide us with some feedback, um, that would be really helpful in planning another successful event or we hope to be a successful event. It will be. Yes. It'll be a successful event. And, and another another awesome crew planning this event. So thank you to all of the conference committee and planners and moderators and speakers. Yeah, I think um, we counted up. There's over 30 volunteers um, that, that did something awesome with this conference and really just two part-time paid people. So this is really a huge, um, huge, huge community lift. And yeah, we couldn't do it without each and every one of y'all. And thanks for coming and sitting on a Zoom room for three days <laughs> with us too. And I'm gonna grab the link right now. So if you have time to spend five minutes on the survey um yeah we thank you for doing that and hopefully 2023 we get to see people in person yes all right well i guess um we could say goodbye and see you again hopefully um not 18 <laughs> months from now but hopefully a lot sooner get involved and we'll see you sooner yeah.